Hello everyone and welcome to Sudesia Zoo! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are here entering the final 10 episodes of Season 1 of Zoo Crafting. 500 episodes later. 500 episodes! That's 500 days of adventure, exploration, a year and a half, and a year that has changed my life in every way. Since starting zoo crafting, I've been able to really rediscover my passion for biology, my absolute thrill that I get when I teach. I've been able to make so many new friends, have so many amazing new experiences. I've been bolder about things I do in real life. I study biology with a renewed passion. I love hearing from people all over the world, members of our community, as we learn learn and teach uh, each other the facts that we know about the natural world and I am so honored to have shared that adventure 500 episodes of it with you guys it has been an amazing journey it has been a life-changing journey and I am so excited to be keeping my secrets about what happens in season two which will be even more amazing more animals more mobs new things to see new things to experience new ways of studying and admiring and exploring the natural world once we hit season two our zoo is going to explode like it has never done before and so i thought it would be nice to take the last 10 episodes of season one so the next 10 episodes up to episode 500 to review what we have done in over a year and a half of working together as a community. So that wonderful little emotional intro aside, Nightlock, I thought what better place to start than my little house because all of those months ago, my teeny house, which was not even in this world, it was actually located in an old world that was on a single player map that I managed by myself. Um, but yeah, it started all the way back then, and then we just slowly but steadily um, met Calf. We ended up moving into this world. We ended up just creating all of this. Look at all of this. I mean, just look. It's just... Oh... I mean, Sunflower's Tree and Zomberry Village with Junior and JJ and now Junior the Third and all of them. Look, you can see the little glowworms in the distance, our epitites that we've collected. Remember when the staff lounge wasn't even a staff lounge like this? It didn't have the tree. It didn't have the basement. It was just like a little lounge in like that little tiny room, that closet room where there's now Dalmatians sitting outside the window was actually where I used for some of my, all my storage. And now it's got this cool tree growing out of it it's got like little balconies and appetites we've got my little garden of eden but yeah this is my house in case you guys haven't seen it before i haven't really done much with it uh it's really more like a shack to be honest but it does have some beautiful uh, golden ore berries in here now and i do want to make some ore berry forest that's a big thing i want to work on in the next next chunk of the series that we're going to be doing in season two uh what is in the house I haven't looked in some of these chests in ages. Oh, wow. Yeah, I forgot I had diamond armor in here. Coral snake eggs, some normal eggs, dying leaves. That's normal, I'm sure. Do I have anything in these chests? No, I really emptied this place out to move everything into the staff lounge. There's coal and stone in here, but that's about it. We do have the back porch patio that we never really finished um, <laughs> that looks over our wonderful Nymphsia garden, which is now 181 flowers strong. I cannot believe that. Oh my gosh, our beautiful memorial garden where I just kind of put little tokens of, of what's happened uh, in life in here so that I can reflect on the fact that every single day, because I do this every single day we have a zoo crafting episode unless i am horrifically sick or otherwise indisposed and because of that i've made some amazing memories i met darling uh while we were doing zoo craft or right after i had started doing i i met him right before there we go i started doing zoo crafting so i have my little memories some little sweet memories of meeting him written in the book that's in that chest uh, philodendrian everywhere because our house is filled up with philodendrian if you guys have seen our vlogs and I love finding mushrooms uh, in the wild and we bought a palm tree on a date together so you know there's little memories like that but every single day and some days are quieter than others some days are more entertaining than others some days are more educational some days are more personal but every single day we share this world together and it has created something so very special Ah, and it all started with this little house, and it didn't even used to have, we actually built the basement where my bedroom is, 
in this world. It didn't even used to have that basement. And I remember when we used to catch wild cows and chickens in the old world on our porch all the time. Oh, and our little desk with maps and books that we never really filled out. Oh, this is an old note from Calf that says a present. Dear Siri, myself and Luba, my new adventuring buddy, who I'm sure you'll meet soon, have been hard at work over at Jurassic Park. Through our biofossil research, we have managed to secure a terror bird. We have been told by our lovely viewers that you were looking for one of your for your bird week, so we decided to make a trip over and give you one, along with a few nice surprises, like Littlefoot here. Oh, that's when Littlefoot showed up for the first time. I remember now. The terror bird is called a Kelican. Your viewers are welcome to give him or her a name as you see fit. In return, if you have any DNA or eggs you would like to give an amazing home over at Jurassic Park, we would be happy to have them. Also, we are on the lookout for paleontology pick if you have any. Oh, Kiss kiss, Calf and Lubot. That was so long ago. And we went on some amazing adventures with them. Like, diving around, gathering potatoes. I still have, we're still going to build a record shop. We're For season two, we're building a record shop in the Village of Light for sure. So I can trade out some of these music discs. Because there are more than just these two music discs. Look, there's like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, uh, with some of them being kind of rare. But come on, I mean, there has to be more than this, and we're just stuck with like Cat and 13. That's it. So we're going to have a little music shop next time. My little green spot, because green spaces everywhere are awesome. My little green snail. I can't believe he's been there for like 300 episodes or something like that. Yeah, you buddy. How you doing? He's so cute. He's so cute. What do I have in here? Oh, a whole bunch of hearts. Oh, what a good place to put them. And my peacock fan, which is one of our very rare treasures. And, of course, our treasures in here. Oh, look at all the glow caps. Our scarab gems. Our steel leaf. Some of the steel leaf armor that we've gathered up. Golden apples. Blue blazing blossoms. Yellow heart container. Ooh, look at that. Nice. The charm of life. Rubies, gold nuggets, diamonds, tanzanite ore, topaz, fireflies. Oh, just my treasure. I love it. The ironwood stuff we've collected, some of the horse armor that I should move out of there. Um, the maze map focus. Just all the pretty, pretty stuff that we've gathered up, including the death blooms. Still not sure where those are from, but they can make black dye. And also my steel leaf pick, which is just so cute, even if I don't use it. Because um, I have my wonderful Beth pick, who is also mossy colored. Oh, I remember all that. Man, we never really did spend a lot of time focusing on the house. Season 2 will definitely spend more time, uh, like side quest time, focusing on beautification of structures that already exist. And then, of course, the Garden of Eden, which is actually named after my precious little niece. And it's just so cute. Look at it. I love it. it. Nightlock has been hanging out here for a long time, but the, I remember when this was just like the top of a cranky cliff, um, and we like sheared it off, put down some grass, let the grass expand, lined it with our precious moss, our very, very precious moss. I love this stuff. Decided that we needed a cinnamon tree. I remember when we put all the apiaries out, when we figured out how to make apiaries for the first time. Oh, and our essence berry bushes. I would say our essence berry bushes are one of the pride and joys of my personal collection. There we go. Also, they're very prickly. If you touch them, they prick you. So you have to watch out. But yeah, just some of my favorite flowers up here. Beautiful glow flowers. And then, of course, we connected. Ah, oh, I remember when we connected the staff lounge together. That's awesome. All right, let's gather this up. But actually, before we go in the staff lounge, I want to go down into the memorial garden in just a second. Because the memorial garden is very special to me. So let's pop up here just to pay homage to my large, large, large uh, greenhouse that was built for my birthday this year, my 27th birthday. Hello, greenhouse. I haven't ever... See, we need to spend more side quests. Note to self, in future, spend side quests actually tending to things that are already built, not looking for more plants. It will be very difficult to constrain myself, like restrain myself, but I think we'll be able to manage. I think the snails are like breeding. There's a ton of them in there. That's adorable. All right, and also, what do I leave in this chest? Ooh, moss patches and other very precious items. I remember getting those moss patches as a birthday gift from Mara and uh, Mystery Man. Let's see, let's poke over here. Okay, nobody over there, but yeah, I just harvested that one up. Okay, we're good. So let's go look in the memorial garden just to see what's going on down there. And the way that our, our garden has expanded again and again and again, 
And our little seed shed has served us so well. For those of you guys who don't know, this is our seed sorting shed. If you pop in here, you can put any seeds inside, and then you can turn it on, and there's a little pump, like this little wooden extraction pipe is connected to a redstone engine. And if you watch it, one by one, there we go, the seeds will start disappearing. They'll get sucked into the pipe, and then they'll be sent through the seed sorting system. So they'll go through uh, the various pipes back there, and it'll spit them out if they are a sapling or common seeds. So like these kinds of seeds, or pumpkin, or geisel green, will end up in here along with any of the saplings. And if they are garden seeds, if they're one set of garden seeds, they'll go in this chest. And if they are some of the miscellaneous garden supplies and a few other seeds, they'll go in this chest. So <laughs> it's quite nice. I love my seed sorting shed. See, here comes a little seed. I love it. And of course, a tunip. A tunip, what? <laughs> a turnip, there we go. At the back, because it reminds me of Harvest Moon, one of my all-time life-changing favorite games. So that is our seed sorting shed. That was the very first time I tried messing with those wonky donkey pipe systems, and I'm still very proud with the end results. Let's see, it is night, but we should be, I'm hoping, safe in our own, our own backyard. So we should be all right. And I also remember when we found that penguin stuck inside of here. That was hilarious that the penguin had like climbed up and apparently got itself lodged inside of the one, one little block there. So the penguin named seriously that calf left for us, which is kind of, kind of silly. And then our memorial garden, which contains some of my favorite little archways. We're going to be beautifying the zoo a lot more, like I keep saying. We're going to focus really hardcore on beautification of the zoo. We're going to focus really hard on adding lots and lots of new educational exhibits. I'm going to force myself to try to build more exhibits versus adventure. So that's going to be a big change. Hello, chicken. You surprised me and scared me a little bit. But that's going to be a big change with season two is tons of exhibits because we will have nigh infinite amount of mobs if everything goes according to plan. So it's going to be very, very interesting. And then right over here is some of my special, super duper special little garden items. My calf cast cactus when calf uh, uh, invited me to his zoo for the first time where I could meet him in calfers. The time shot roses. The, my 26th birthday hibiscus, which needs to have a 27th planted next to it somewhere. My Caffordale Blossom, a magic tree just to kind of like rain some beauty down onto the whole area. The chicken is heading over into one of our donation trees by our wonderful friend Victor, who has been an amazing member of the community for ages now. It must be well over a year now. And he donated a dollar to get a tree planted, and this is his warmth of friendship tree planted in the memorial garden, surrounded by red gladioli, and it has little beautiful lanterns in it just to kind of make it really look pretty. Over here are the trees we have planted. I still don't know what we're going to plant. Episode 500. It's going to be kind of amazing. Yeah, it's going to be very amazing to have episode 500. So I, I have an idea of what I want to plant, <laughs> but I have to think about if I really want to go through with that or not. So that would be, uh, this is our little cluster, our orchard, we could say, of time. And each tree represents 100 episodes, 100 days of adventure and exploration, animal discoveries and knowledge and learning how to play Minecraft if you go all the way back to the apple tree of origins. Because zoo crafting was the very first time I ever played Minecraft, period. So I learned a lot. And the apple tree of origins is because we first had the original Zoodestia in an orchard the apple orchard with like a ton of beautiful garden flowers around. And then we met Calf and Kaffers, and so we got the spice tree of friendship. Then we really got into dinosaurs with prehistoric discoveries, so we have this palm tree. And then we really got the very ambitious and really into adventures in episode 400 onward. So that is why we have the ambitious uh, adventurous tree. So, or I should say 300 onward. And 200 onward would have been like prehistoric discoveries like that. So for episode 500... I think I've got something special in mind. We'll plant the tree on episode 500. 
And then, yeah, it leads up to that little garden I was telling you about, my home garden. We have our beautiful nymphsias. Each flower represents 100 of you amazing members of the community. And each individual bud represents each person. So you get to pick which color nymphsia you want to be and be happy about that. We have our Tree of Illumination, our episode 50 special from a find, a very rare find inside of a uh, desert temple. And I absolutely love it. Look at this beautiful thing. And then I think it was episode 200. We had the Tree of Illumination bloom. And it got all of these beautiful blossoms on it. And I just, I love it. That's, that's been one of the most important landmarks, I think, of the entire adventure. Some bamboo, our amazing giant super big uh, jungle tree covered in cocoa, like coconut that we harvest. Yeah, the peaceful little, peaceful little waterfall back here. Oh my gosh, see what, there's just like room where I could add benches, room where I could put like more fountains and other decorative pieces. So yeah, we will be sure to buckle in and make side quests in the future a lot more about um, like beautifying what already exists too. And you guys are always welcome to supply plenty of ideas because that's how our community has grown so strong. And of course we have Special Agent Glacier down here in our memorial garden. This is kind of like our burial chamber for any animals that have have passed on and so far we only have the original Bob the third and his his chicken friend inside of their little tomb in here each each area has like uh, doors that are hidden and then you can open them up open up the chest read a little bit about the expired animal and see some of the the presents we have laid to rest with it for this one, it was Rest in Peace Bob the Third, a member of the brave, bold, heroic family of sheep who broke all so social norms by being daredevils and tree climbers. Bob the Third will be deeply missed. His time was far too short, but he was a great friend to many a daredevil, a daring daredevil chicken who wanted to wander where usually only the eagles do. Bob the Third was a sweet sheep born to Bob the Second and his lovely wife back in the old world. He survived meteor attacks and managed to live a happy life behind a cougar for many months before his daredevil ways caught up with him while he was park tree parkouring in a rainstorm and ended up being struck by lightning which was quite an amazing event he did get struck by lightning but thankfully after we buried him we remembered we could clone him so we got his his like wool and we got his dna from the wool and cloned him and then this is just a little quiet corner that i remember my grandpa who passed away uh while we were recording the series quite a bit ago um but he loved he loved fishing and so it always makes me think of cattails and makes me think of him and it makes me glad that you're watching over him especially agent glacier because like i said it, like even on his funeral the day he died even on his funeral i was here for you guys um because i wanted to be and you guys were here for me too and you didn't even know it because i didn't even really mention anything about it in recording ah so yeah it's it's I've grown, you've grown, we've grown, the community's grown. Look at the Nymphsias if you need evidence of it. And it's just been an immensely powerful experience to do this. And I look over all of our builds and I can't help but feel like so odd and full of wonder. And now that I step back and kind of see them with a bit more of a clear vision, I can see where I want to like take the time to really treat this area, treat this whole place, treat our zoo and the place where we can potentially in the future share as an entire community with a lot of respect. It makes me want to come around here and like plant flowers and really show you guys, even in this virtual limited way, just how much you mean to me. And so we haven't beautified the area yet, but like I keep saying, I will remember to do that in the future. That's the lesson I'm taking away from the first 500 episodes, is that it's all fun to rush by and go on to the next adventure and the next adventure. But every now and then you really have to turn around and look at it with a fresh set of eyes and go, if I was brand new and just coming into here, what would I want to see? What would I see? Does it reflect how much I care about you guys? What you see here? Do, do you see the details that I put in because I want you to be happy and inspired? Well, I'm going to work harder on that in the future. But we'll wrap up this part of the, the world tour uh, by just looking over 
the berry bakery the berry sweet bakery still very very proud about this it's one of the the best places in the whole pl in the whole server if you ask me the whole world it also is hooked up to a sorting system that will sort in the various like seeds for the berries as well as berry bushes and the actual berries other than the candle berry pop into the beautiful berry bakery where we've got a nice two cobblestone furnace oven going and the berries will come directly into the kitchen just right there where any bakers can come over here and properly prepare up some delicious meals to serve up to visitors and guests and so on i very much like it it's one of my favorite things um a little place to sit down and eat watch the ducks over at the uh, duck pond good they're still there they're just hanging out on the other side today there's also a little spot where you can sit down where a cookie cat donated one of the very first trees and you can come over, sit down, eat some cookies in Berry Sweet Bakery's yard and enjoy, enjoy that atmosphere. You can also come over and pick some fresh berries. One day there will be an NPC involved in the Berry Sweet Bakery where you can like trade the berries to that NPC, maybe for some delicious cookies. And that's kind of this part. Oh, I guess we'll look at the, the duck pond too, just real quick. Hello, Ranger Ashley, Ranger Sebastian, a bazillion and a half ducks. You guys have seen the duck pond pretty recently because you helped me hatch those eggs, which was so wonderful. That was so much fun doing some of the egg hatching things with you guys. This is Cinnamon's Memorial Bridge, dedicated to a horse we had in the old world who unfortunately died rather suddenly of a combination of poisoning and strangulation. It wasn't pleasant. It was sudden and un unpleasant, but she died while we were on an expedition to collect ducks to add to the very, very first duck pond. Also, there's a chicken in our pond, and look at the little fishies. They're so cute. But that's why we have this, this little gazebo and this little bridge built to honor her and a beautiful custom willow tree that took me forever to build. <laughs> and just a really nice area for the ducks. Also, their well-being is very important to us. So over here, we've got like a nice area full of cattails, fallen rushes, uh, grass, you know, some mushrooms, little nest, little teensy itty bitty nest that they have. And we try to take very good care of our animals. And we have the rangers here to actually do some kung fu and like stab things with their, their pointy little walking sticks to try to keep some of the animals, since we've noticed uh, the ogres at least seem to enjoy our poor bunny rabbits, but try to keep these animals safe. And one day they'll be able to tell everybody about the duck pond and various things about like the common species of mallards and whatnot. But I love it. I love it. And of course this leads into the Village of Light, which we will see another day with the Chocobo Stables. And I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow as we continue our world tour. And let me know what your favorite areas are, some of your favorite builds, things that you really remember. Because I'm, I'm drawing in all of these memories. All of the inspiration, all of the fantastic builds we have done. And I'm pulling it in for 500 episodes of Lessons of what we've done so that I can prepare for the next really big adventure and it's going to be a doozy. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the morning when we continue our world tour and we see what else we've done in the zoo and throughout the world. Bye bye guys!